The bone and teeth samples these researchers are working with come from a couple of woolly mammoths born 40,000 years apart. They've used the samples to help create the most complete sequence of the genome of the giant creatures scientists believe went extinct 11,000 years ago. Comparing the DNA from the two samples allowed researchers to peer way back in time and determine that 285,000 years ago, mammoths somehow narrowly averted a mass extinction. When we think they're really at their lowest, they're bottoming out, where normally today we would imagine these populations have no chance of survival, they come back. Right? So to quote Jurassic Park, life will find a way. These animals found a way that the population grows. The researchers from Canada, Sweden and the U.S. published their findings today in the journal Current Biology. The dramatic drop. Canadian Hendrik Poinar says as evolutionary geneticists, they are only interested in finding out why mammoths eventually did go extinct. But he acknowledges their research could be used in the worldwide race to clone a woolly mammoth. Scientists could use the newly sequenced mammoth genome to modify the DNA of an Asian elephant, the most likely surrogate for a mammoth clone. What this does do is it gives you, in a nutshell, the changes between an Asian elephant, which is the closest living relative to a mammoth, to a mammoth. Cave drawings show that humans have long been fascinated by the largest land animal to have shared the earth with them. Today, that fascination is bolstered by new technology and fresh samples from melting permafrost that put a mammoth clone within reach in just decades. I think at some point we'll be able to do it. I have no doubt that technology will get there. I think the bigger question is, should we do this? He says his research is better used to try to determine why species become extinct and how to prevent that from happening. Ron Charles, CBC News, Hamilton.